And talking with us now on USCAP TV, Dr. Victor Reuter, you are this year's Maud Abbott Plenary Lecturer. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So quite an honor, but you said it's all, it also comes with a little bit of intimidation. The Maud Abbott Lecture is a keynote lecture uh, given by the United States and Canadian Academy of Pathology to someone who counsel and executive feels is worthy because of their contributions either to the field of pathology or to the academy. It's humbling when one sees a list of prior awardees to think that you're sharing the podium with people that you have greatly admired, who have inspired you. Uh, it's difficult to see exactly what you have in common with them, but it's a great honor and a humbling honor and I, I look forward to it. So for your talk, Tell us a little bit about that. What key topics do you plan to touch on? Well, um, I am a surgical pathologist who has specialized in the field of genitourinary pathology for pretty much my entire career. Um, Gravitz tumor, who Paul Gravitz is a, a pathologist who practiced in Germany and described the origins of a tumor of the kidney and after that, it was named after him for many years, Gravitz Tumor. So I am using that particular story and vignette, which was extremely controversial for over a hundred years regarding his theory on the beginnings of renal tumors, to explore the evolution of a concept, the evolution of a disease, the evolution of therapy, and try to tie in evolution into the evolution of the academy how we have transformed ourselves, how we have, in fact, assured our future by being able to adapt to the requirements of modern day medicine to be able to serve our patients in a much more uh, useful way. And that's really why I chose the topic. It has, quite frankly, very little to do with Dr. Gravitz, as much as I love him. <laughs> okay. Um, some of the major messages that you want the attendees of your talk to walk away with. Um, for those who are established in the field, they have a role to inspire. They have a role to mentor. For those who are inspired, they have a requirement of intellectual curiosity. They have a requirement of academic scholarship. They have a requirement of education and to educate and in turn inspire others. Uh, this is what's going to move our field forward. This is what's going to move healthcare forward. And I hope that through the Academy and the other divisions of the International Academy of Pathology and through our work at all of our medical centers that we can do that and that way assure a strong future for the field of pathology and for them to be engaged and be a cornerstone in modern medicine, medicine for many years to come. So hopefully to light a little bit of a fire. Uh, Inspiring. Inspire. I don't know about a fire, <laughs> but inspire. Okay. So you're a leader at one of the top cancer centers in the world, Memorial Sloan Kettering. What are you most excited about as far as cancer treatment goes? I think the evolution of cancer um, really has put uh, a shining light on therapy. Uh, and therapy is much more interesting now because when we know the genetic mechanisms that drive diseases, we can target molecules that are affected downstream. We call that pathways. And so it's very interesting how actually we can translate just morphologic features into genetic features and then try to establish better ways of treating patients. However, what I have learned, and I think what makes pathology so current and so important, is that oftentimes we can put tumors into classifications that then can be teased out by molecular means. But when we see the results of those molecular studies, we then can translate that back to the microscope and predict what the molecular underpinnings of that disease are. So morphology in the eyes of someone who is really paying attention is a wonderful screening tool to be able to direct therapy in the right way, to do the correct molecular analyses, to save money and help patients in a manner which is much more cost efficient, which is much more timely, and clearly puts pathology right into the center of personalized care. And for that, I must tell you that it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be working in this field and in institutions like mine. 
And uh, on the opposite side of that, some of the biggest issues that you face. Um, I think that uh, financial, I think healthcare dollars are difficult to come by. Uh, Sequester is a very good example. <laughs> yeah. As someone who does consultation work for the, NI, for the NCI and for uh, different trials groups, I think the sequester and the amount of money that can go to uh, funding research, I think it's a challenge. And money has been rather scarce for many, many years. I think that's important. Uh, I think that one is also concerned to maintain pathology current. Because of such an emphasis on therapeutics, a lot of this work is being done also by medical oncologists, et cetera, and we have to make sure that we train our young aspiring pathologists into modern medicine so they can actually participate in not only the therapy, but also the inquiry and the research that will lead therapy in the future. Constantly trying to do more with less. Absolutely, and trying to do more with less or whatever you have. All right, Dr. Victor Reuter, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward to your lecture tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank